Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and welcome to block one of the Christmas Basket Quilt Project and here is our block today. This one is called Flower Pot and this is a pattern that was put out by the Kansas City Star newspaper. And it's a nice 10 inch block and it uses flying geese units and half square triangles. So it's a pretty um, basic block design and I've drafted it so you don't have to deal with biased edges. So um, this one is fairly easy to put together. So I hope you'll give this one a try. Okay, here are the fabric pieces you need to make the first block in the Christmas basket quilt. Now this block was called Flower Pot and it's a Kansas City Star pattern. And I went ahead and cut my pieces to use triangle paper with. Um, and I've done this throughout the project because there are so many half square triangles to make. It just kind of speeds it up and makes it a little bit more accurate. The instructions are written for doing it the two at a time method. So you can follow that or you can use a triangle paper or foundation paper or any method that you like for making half square triangles. But you'll need the A pieces um, you need to cut two that are three inches square and I've got those paired up with some G squares. B is two two and a half inch squares. C is two three inch squares and they are also paired up with G squares. D is five two and a half inch squares and you're going to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of two of these. E is two pieces that are two and a half by six and a half. F is two pieces that are two and a half by four and a half and the G's are paired up with the A's and the C's. H is four two and a half inch squares. So we're going to get started by making the half square triangles. So we're going to do that with the C and the A squares that are matched up with the G squares. Okay when you're using triangle paper you need to lay your pieces right sides together. So I'm going to do that. and then lay the triangle paper on top. And I'm just kind of centering this. It doesn't have to be exact. And then I'm going to go ahead and pin it on one side. And then I'm going to sew on the dotted lines. And I'm going to lower my stitch length to 1.5 and I am using a 50 weight thread and it's in the bobbin and in the needle. down the other dotted line. Okay, so I have this one done. Now I'm going to finish the rest of them and then trim them down. Okay, now I need to trim down the half square triangles. So I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and mat and a ruler and just trim right on the solid lines. So that's one side. I'm just going to turn it and then do the other two. and then cut on this solid line right here. And then I can peel the paper off. And, and I'm just going to crease it and pull it off. And there I have half square triangle. So all I need to do is to press and then trim the dog ears and they'll be the exact size that I need. So there's no need to trim down afterwards on these. So it's a little bit faster and a little bit more accurate. You just have to buy the triangle paper. 
Okay, now we're making flying geese units. So we need our F rectangles and our B and D squares. Now these two units are mirror image. So we're going to have one where the red is on the right side and one where red is going to be on the left side. So you'll have to watch your placement when you do this. And I'm just going to put my red starting on my left and I'm going to go match up the raw edges and then I'm going to sew from this point to this point and you can draw a diagonal line right there. I'm going to follow my tape here. It's going from the needle straight down so I can just keep the tip of my square along the edge of this tape and it'll keep it straight for me. And I'm going to go back up to a 2.0 stitch length. Okay, I'm going to leave that there and now I'm going to do the other one and I'm going to put a green square on the, the left side. these off. Trim my threads and now I'm going to trim off the outer corner. So I'm just going to take my scissors and trim that off leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. And you can use your rotary cutter for this if you want to. Okay so now I have half of my flying geese unit. So I'm going to press these triangles up and then I'll sew the square on the opposite side. Okay, so for this one I'm going to put the green on the right side. And for this one I'm going to put the red on the right side. trim these and then press and then I'll have my two flying geese units. So here are the two flying geese units. See they're mirror imaged from each other. And now we're ready to lay out the pieces and start putting the block together. Okay so for this block I'm going to start down in the at the bottom and I'm going to put an E square here and then I need an A and a G half square triangle that's going to go this way. I need an H square that will go here. Pull those loose threads out of the way. And another AG half square triangle that goes this direction. I need a D square. go here and then the C and the G triangles, half square triangles will go here and then this is the other E rectangle. So we're just going to kind of build our way up. Okay, I need a D square here and here and I need an A square and then the GA goes here and here. Okay, I need the flying geese unit with the green to match here. And over here I need the green to match over here. So we've got those. Got another H square here and then we have flying geese units and they're going to go 
um, this direction and then the last H square goes there. So there we have the block all laid out and so now I can sew it together. So I'm going to sew all of this into units because it's hard to go straight across in rows because we've got these flying geese units which take up like two units of space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this section here. This will be one section. This will be one section. And then I'm going to sew those together and these together. And these four pieces there and these four pieces here. So I'm going to make units of four up here one row here, one row here, and then put it all together. So I'm going to adjust the camera and go back to the sewing machine. Okay, I'm going to sew the bottom row first. So I'm going to sew the H square to the half square triangle unit. the E rectangle. is the row that I just finished. I'm going to lay that back and then I'm going to sew the other row. Okay, now I'm going to work on another section. And as I sew these, I put them right back where I pick them up from so that I don't get them confused. And I'm going to go ahead and chain piece these two together. So these all go in one unit, in one section. And I'm going to press and then sew these two together. Okay, on these two sections, they go together like this. And so I have points right here to match. So I'm going to nest these seams together. And then I'm going to take a straight pin and go through the point on this side right here and then go through the point on that side to make sure they're all lined up. I got my seams nested and replace the pin and sew that together. have that section. So I'm going to put press this one and then set it back.
and here we have our first block. So this one was called the flower pot block. There's a, another block in the series all, that is also called flower pot. So uh, lots of blocks that have the same name. And uh, I think this is a good start. So I hope you'll join me for the next block. Well, that is it for block number one of the Christmas Basket Quilt Project, and I hope you will give this block a try. I think it's um, pretty easy to put together and uh, makes a nice block. So um, if you like this video, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.